Hi everyone, I'm Jake. Welcome to Green World product training video. The topic that I'm going to talk about today is thyroid care. Based on my research and studies, what I discovered about thyroid disorders is that people suffer from thyroid disorders primarily because of lack of information, ignorance and misdiagnosis. So in today's video, I'm going to provide you all the information that you need to understand all about thyroid disorder so that you can help yourself and also help your loved ones. At the same time, I'm also going to provide you all the resources and natural products that are available at Green World, which can help you in the prevention of thyroid disorders. So starting the video right away, first thing first that we need to understand is what is the thyroid gland and what are the functions of thyroid gland. As you can see on the slide, there is a butterfly shaped gland what we call thyroid gland which is located somewhere in this area inside our throat. Now let's quickly have a look at all the functions that are performed by thyroid gland in our body. So one of the primary function of thyroid gland is to regulate our metabolic rate means the amount of calories that we burn in performing various day-to-day -day activities uh, calories that we get by eating food. Thyroid hormones regulate the metabolization of carbohydrates, fats and protein. Then thyroid gland also support the formation of the red blood cells. It maintains electrolyte balance in our body. Thyroid gland also secretes a protein called thyrocalcitonin which regulates the blood calcium levels in our body. Alright so those were the basic uh, functions performed by thyroid gland. Now let me explain that how does thyroid gland even perform those functions? So in uh, our brain and also throughout our body, there are different glands, okay? So primarily in our brain, there's a gland which is called a master gland, it's called hypothalamus. Hypothalamus releases a hormone uh, in case of thyroid gland, it releases a hormone called TRH, that is thyroid releasing hormone. What are hormones? Hormones are basically chemical messengers, you know, they carry a message. So from the master gland, uh, they carry a message and it reaches another gland and then that gland performs the function. So that's how uh, our brain regulates our entire body and different uh, motor functions and other mechanism in our body. Alright, coming back to the thyroid gland. So from the hypothalamus, uh, TRH, thyroid releasing hormone is released. That uh, TRH then activates the pituitary gland, another gland in our brain and then pituitary gland releases another hormone TSH that is thyroid stimulating hormone. That TSH then reaches our thyroid gland and stimulates it as the name suggests thyroid stimulating hormone. Now after getting stimulated by TSH, thyroid gland start producing the hormones T4 and then T4 get converted into active hormone T3. T3 hormone then regulates our metabolism. That is how our body utilizes the stored calories and convert them into energy. And that's how our entire organism starts functioning. And as you can see in the slide, another hormone uh, released by uh, thyroid gland is calcitonin. Calcitonin performs the function of regulating the level of calcium in our blood. So this was the basic functioning and understanding of the thyroid gland and how it functions, how it releases the hormones. Now, in case of thyroid, primarily there are two disorders that we all have usually heard about and those are hypothyroid and hyperthyroid. So in case of hypothyroid, basically what happens, our thyroid gland becomes underactivated, which means it stops producing or uh, even if it's producing the amount of hormone drastically drops down that is the t4 and t3 hormones and you can also see some of the uh, symptoms that uh, people suffer from in case of hypothyroid hair loss apathy intolerance to cold eye and face edema that is uh, a lot of water retention menstrual disturbances even miscarriages in case of women who are trying to conceive loss of energy constipation insomnia abnormal weight gain muscle weakness and fatigue these are the common symptoms second thyroid disorder that we hear about is hyperthyroid in case of hyperthyroid our thyroid gland becomes overactive hyperactive and it start producing more than required amount of t4 uh, hormone because of which our body suffers from various malfunction as you can see the symptoms of hyperthyroid bulging eyes flashing face and uh, swollen thyroid gland intolerance to heat hair thinning diarrhea tremors and again uh, uh, miscarriages uh, or menstrual disturbances extreme weight loss leading to anorexia and then uh, muscle weakness muscle wastage localized edema that is swelling in feet or in hands so these are various uh, symptoms of the person who suffers from hyperthyroid so these were the two commonly known thyroid disorders and usually to uh, diagnose anybody uh, the standard thyroid test which is con uh, conducted at various labs all around the world 
they usually uh, check your uh, TSH level, that is your thyroid stimulating hormone, your T4 levels and your T3 levels. So this is the basic information that is available about thyroid disorders. In the beginning of the video, I told you that uh, most of people in this world are suffering from thyroid disorders because of misdiagnosis, lack of information and ignorance. Now let me talk about misdiagnosis. So as per this information, TSH level does not fluctuate for 10 to 15 years and you um, keep getting this, you know, normal lab test result, uh, the so-called normal lab test result, but you are constantly suffering from these notable, noticeable symptoms like uh, insomnia, constipation, anxiety, depression, weight gain, and you keep taking medication for all these different, different disorders, thinking that these are the main problem, whereas actual problem is your thyroid gland. But lab test results are coming normal. That's why you keep suffering for 10 to 15 years. But if you could have diagnosed it at the right time, maybe you would have never suffered from hyperthyroid or hypothyroid. So the question is that how do you diagnose it? Of course, number one thing that you need to take into account is all the symptoms that you're suffering from, which I mentioned. If you have those symptoms, it's a clear cut sign there is some thyroid disorder. Now, I'm going to provide you the information of the right or correct diagnostic test that you can get done from the lab so that don't ever succumb to hypothyroid or hyperthyroid. So have a look on the slide here. I'm going to read it for you. Uh, as per these diagnostic tests, I'll provide a PDF in the uh, description in the link, uh, provide you a link. You can download it also. Important tests that you need to get done in addition to standard tests of TSH, T4 and T3 are the antibodies test. So here you can see TPO antibodies and TG antibodies. So thyroid peroxidase antibodies and thyroid globulin antibodies. These antibodies, uh, I'll explain later in the video what are these antibodies, but uh, the diagnostic test that you need to get done is this one. I provided the standard reference range and optimal range. The re optimal range is what needs to come out in your lab test so that uh, to prove that you don't have thyroid problem. If there's anything more than the optimal range, which means you need to start taking precaution. For that also, I'll tell you later in the video what products you can use to prevent it at the right time. So uh, these are the right diagnostic tests that you can use. Download it from the description. Moving ahead with the video. All those people who are suffering from uh, hypothyroid are actually the victim of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Hashimoto's thyroiditis is an autoimmune thyroid disorder, which is also a type of hypothyroid disorder. And the second problem is the Graves disease, which is also an autoimmune thyroid disorder, which is a type of hyperthyroid. All right, let's first talk about Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So as I mentioned in the beginning, misdiagnosis. Why did I say that? The reason for that is very simple. The standard lab test result for thyroid tests, they measure TSH level and your TSH level remains neutral for 10 to 15 years. They don't fluctuate or change and Hashimoto's keeps on destroying your thyroid gland for all those 10 to 15 years. Before you even get diagnosed with hypothyroid, Hashimoto's had already destroyed your thyroid gland. The most shocking part is that almost 95% of hypothyroid patients are actually the victim of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. If you are hearing about Hashimoto's thyroiditis, does not mean that it is something which is newly discovered. Hashimoto's thyroiditis was discovered in the year 1912 by a Japanese surgeon, Dr. Hakaru Hashimoto. It is an autoimmune disease in which the immune cells start attacking the healthy tissue of your glands or your thyroid gland in this particular case instead of protecting you. So why does it happen? What is an autoimmune disease? So I'll explain it in a simple language. Uh, in case of autoimmune disease, basically uh, we, in our immune system, we have our uh, T cells and we have our B cells. The job of our T cells is to fight the pathogens or virus or bacteria and the job of our B cells is to release antibodies. So whenever our body suffers from any kind of viral or bacterial attack, our B cells start releasing antibodies and then their proteins called cytokines take the message from B cells once the antibodies are released to the T cells and after receiving that message, T cells start attacking those virus and bacteria. This is how our immune system works. Now, in case of autoimmune disorders, what happens is that our own immune cells start attacking the healthy tissues of our uh, glands, in this case, our thyroid gland. What is the reason for that? 
In autoimmune condition, basically our body suffers from massive amount of inflammation. All the tissues inside are inflamed, highly inflamed. And uh, because of that, there is a process that takes place which is called molecular mimicry. What happens in that case is that uh, our tissues of our thyroid gland start appearing as enemies or as virus or pathogens to our uh, immune cell that is our T cells and B cells and due to that uh, inflammation or molecular mimicry B cells start producing antibodies in massive amount much more than a regular amount because of that our T cells get hyperactive and they start attacking our thyroid gland the tissues of our thyroid gland this is what happens in case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis now this information might be new to a lot of you but let me tell you as per the data available nine out of ten patients of hypothyroid actually suffers from Hashimoto's thyroiditis in fact Hashimoto's is the main cause of hypothyroid women are seven into more times vulnerable to Hashimoto's thyroiditis All right now let's have a look at some of the symptoms of Hashimoto's thyroiditis and uh, in fact I would uh, say that if you're an endocrinologist or your doctor carefully observe these symptoms when you share your symptoms with them it can be Hashimoto's can be diagnosed at the right time and you might not have to ever suffer from hypothyroid in that case so these are some of the symptoms acid reflux anxiety brain fog constipation digestive problem drowsiness multiple food allergies muscle soreness palpitations or irregular heartbeat low vitamin D vitiligo hair loss heavy period joint pain body weakness weight gain these are common symptoms which people need to be more careful about so this is where the right information comes in to play we have to be uh, careful and more observant about our own self about our own body and always keep these symptoms in mind now because of Hashimoto's thyroiditis there are more complications that people can suffer from like these ones increased risk of memory loss like uh, further it can further lead to dementia or Alzheimer increased risk of heart attack type 2 diabetes high blood pressure and also compromised immune system which can again make you vulnerable for a lot of infection and one of the most painful side effect or you can say a disease which result because of Hashimoto's thyroiditis is rheumatoid arthritis all right so we understood about Hashimoto's thyroiditis which is actually the main cause of hypothyroid what now are the causes of Hashimoto's let's try and understand those so number one that I want to show you is the uh, hereditary factors or genetic factors all right so any of your parents your mother your father or even your grandparents ever had uh, hypothyroid or hyperthyroid then there is 100% uh, chance that you might also get victimized to this disease and uh, if, if you carry one gene each from your mother one from your father in that case also you're vulnerable to becoming uh, diagnosed with hypothyroid so my humble advice is that in case of family history every child when they turn 15 uh, years old should get their lab test done and uh, that is the right time when this disease can actually be prevented now of course apart from a genetic factor there are some environmental factors also which can create these uh, thyroid disorders and these are smoking alcohol or cellular deficiency or vitamin D deficiency then stress infections or uh, consuming uh, prescription drugs so all these are some genetic and environmental factors which result in Hashimoto's thyroiditis now next cause of Hashimoto's thyroiditis that I want to show you is the infection from Epstein-Barr virus Epstein-Barr virus is basically a virus which is present in all of us uh, you know it can come through uh, sharing uh, drinking water or kissing even the simple act of kissing can uh, get uh, this virus can get transferred into our system or eating food without washing our hand through our environment somehow Epstein Barr virus finds a house in our body but our immune system is strong enough and it deactivates this virus so this virus even though it stays in our body but it is deactivated now in case of autoimmune disease like Hashimoto thyroiditis due to various factors that I mentioned earlier either the environmental factors or the genetic factor this Epstein-Barr virus gets activated and inside our small intestine or our large intestine this virus starts creating inflammation due to that inflammation we suffer from a condition called intestinal permeability or leaky gut because of which all these unnecessary toxins and even these virus Epstein-Barr virus start getting released into our bloodstream and then they reaches our liver they compromises the function of our liver uh, decreases the production of an important antioxidant called glutathione and 
that further leads to inflammation in various glands and tissues in our body and in this particular case in the thyroid gland also from one of the study i found out that uh, in the tissue samples of uh, people who were suffering from hypothyroid uh, uh, the tissue sample of the thyroid gland uh, a massive amount of abstin ber virus was discovered in those tissue samples all right before we move further i want to bring one thing to your notice and that is in case of hypothyroid the medication usually which is given by doctors is synthroid or that is the uh, synthetic form of t4 hormone uh, this medication is a synthetic form of hormone so basically because our gland is not producing that hormone anymore that's why we take it externally but that medication has nothing which can stop the destruction of your gland if you want to save yourself from this uh, problem or in future from a uh, removal of your thyroid gland surgery you have to intervene with something which can stop the destruction of your thyroid gland and for that number one thing as i mentioned the abstin ber virus we need to deactivate this virus again how do we do that naturally so in green world we have certain products which have been clinically or scientifically proven to deactivate the abstin ber virus so number one that i want to bring to your notice here is intestine cleansing tea all right so in support of our intestine cleansing tea i want to quickly share one clinical study or clinical trial with you this uh, was uh, submitted uh, in the uh, medical journal i'll quickly read it for you you can see it on the screen uh, it was submitted in the uh, us national library of medicine national institutes of health uh, the main uh, idea was that epigalloketocin 3 gallate inhibition of epstein barr virus so basically uh, egcg is the main component of green tea and uh, that's what we are talking about here in this study we investigated the effects of t polyphenols epigalloketocin uh, 3 gallate that is egcg on ebv that is epstein barr virus spontaneous lytic infection and the mechanism involved in ebv positive cells we found that egcg could effectively inhibit the constitutive lytic infection of ebv cancer research institute jiangya school of medicine they conducted this study so uh, my advice to anybody who suffers from all these symptoms or uh, have a problem of hypothyroid is to start drinking at least at least 2 to 3 cups of intestine uh, cleansing tea in the morning All right the second natural product that our company green world offers in dealing with uh, the abstin ber virus infection is the ganoderma plus i'll present another study to you uh, so this study was also submitted in US, us national library of medicine national institutes of health it was uh, conducted uh, in 2017 so according to the study triterpenoids from ganoderma lucidum inhibit the activation of ebv antigens as telomerase inhibitors so triterpenoids are basically the main active ingredient of ganoderma mushroom in the present study five triterpenoids were identified as the major phytochemicals in ganoderma lucidum pharmacological evaluation in vitro demonstrated that these triterpenoids were able to inhibit the activation of ebv antigen that is the abstin ber virus antigens at the triterpenoids also inhibited the activity of telomerase which is an enzyme associated with ebv infection that is the abstin ber virus infection so ganoderma at green world we have been promoting ganoderma since forever and i would say that uh, take at least two caps in the morning and at least two caps in the evening and that should help you with ebv deactivation all right now presenting to you the third natural product that can help in deactivation of abstin ber virus and that is chitosin so according to this study chitin oligosaccharide chitin oligosaccharide are the main uh, active component of uh, chitosin uh, supplement uh chitin oligosaccharide modulates gut microbiota and attenuates high fat diet induced metabolic syndrome in mice thus far narcos that is chitin oligosaccharide has displayed a series of pharmacological effects such as antimicrobial activity and protection against pathogen induced infection in this study narcos feeding maintained the stability of intestinal homeostasis that's what we need uh, in case of our uh, hoshimotos infection also Uh, Epstein-Barr virus 
attacks our intestine and that's what we are talking here intestinal homeostasis so as per this study also cheetosin is highly effective in maintaining your gut uh, integrity and reducing the infection caused by bad virus like Epstein Burr virus in addition to all these wonderful supplements to deactivate uh, uh, EBV uh, another important uh, guidance that I can give you is uh, trying to change your diet and in uh, particular you know you can try elimination diet that is one by one try eliminating few things which are usually more sensitive in case of our gut like uh, gluten so all the products that are related with gluten you can try and eliminating from the diet and then observe your body same thing you can do with the dairy products and soy products as well all right moving further now another cause of Hashimoto's is the adrenal stress so as per various studies and observation almost 90 percent of Hashimoto's patients suffer from some degree of adrenal dysfunction so we have our adrenal glands they uh, produce various hormones one of the hormones that is produced by our adrenal glands is cortisol in case of uh, adrenal stress now when I say adrenal stress you know any kind of stress that we get in our day-to-day -day life work stress education examination or you know bad relationship uh, financial stress we have stress all around in our modern day life and that stress create a stress in our adrenal gland because of that adrenal gland starts secreting more cortisol and that cortisol when it's produced in high amount creates inflammation and as I mentioned earlier in the beginning of the video that inflammation is one of the main reason for molecular mimicry in cases of autoimmune disorders now if you remember in the beginning of the video I also mentioned that women are seven times more vulnerable to Hashimoto's thyroiditis and adrenal stress is one of the main reason for that so what happens in case of uh, adrenal stress as I mentioned uh, the, the glands go haywire and they produce more cortisol Adrenal stress also affects the uh, stimulation of estrogen in our body and because women uh, their main hormone is estrogen when it is overstimulated in our thyroid gland also we have estrogen receptors because of that overstimulation of uh, estrogen during adrenal stress the uh, amount of estrogen increases in the thyroid gland also that results in inflammation and because of which uh, women are more vulnerable also that's why one of the reason why uh, a lot of women post pregnancy or during pregnancy suffers from thyroid disorder and reason for that is obviously hormonal imbalance caused by adrenal stress now of course one of the main thing that we can do is to control stress in our day-to-day -day life we can do that by regular exercise and we can do that by meditation also but at green world we also provide one incredibly natural supplement and that is blueberry eye care gel I know the name is IK gel it is highly beneficial for eyes but one main ingredient in this uh, product is ginkgo biloba now I'm gonna show you a study according to which ginkgo biloba can, is an adaptogenic basically it helps our body to adapt to stress and that's how ginkgo biloba has the effect of adapting to the adrenal stress and bringing our adrenal glands in control so look at the study uh, ginkgo blunts the effects of cortisol in two ways the first way is that ginkgo slows down the conversion of cholesterol to cortisol in the adrenal glands because of the extract ginkgo glide B the second uh, of which is ginkgo glide B slows down the release of corticotropin releasing hormone by the hypothalamus which is responsible for stimulating the adrenal glands to secrete cortisol so it slows the release and conversion of cortisol so taking blueberry eye care gel on a daily basis provides you double benefit it benefits your eyes and at the same time it controls the cortisol release by adrenal glands all right guys so those were some incredible products from green world which can help in prevention and controlling of Hashimoto's thyroiditis let's now talk about the second condition that people suffer from the second autoimmune disorder and that is the Graves disease in case of Graves disease also our uh, um, immune cells start attacking our um, thyroid gland but in a different way in this case uh, our B cells produces uh, different antibodies and because of which our thyroid gland starts secreting heavy amount of T4 and T3 and it also leads to uh, swelling of our thyroid gland so these are some of the products that we can take even in case of this autoimmune disorder and primarily uh, our uh, uh, Cheetosin, Ganoderma Plus, Zinc Tablet and some of these incredible green tea like Lipid Care Tea, Pine Pollen Tea and of course Intestine Cleansing Tea alright guys uh, in the end 
I would like to conclude with one simple message and that is thyroid disorders can be prevented if you look at the symptoms, do the correct diagnostics and take the right products. You don't have to really suffer from hyperthyroid or hyperthyroid ever in your life if you take right action at the right time. Alright guys, I'm gonna see you soon with another training video. Till then, take care.